Um, the film is really, I feel that the, the main character of the film is actually the city of Beijing because I felt that it was meaningful to document the city one year before the Olympics. Um, the story is actually told by, through the eyes of three main characters, meaning um, a boy who wants to become a torch bearer, a road sweeper who wants to stage a mass Olympic countdown performance, and a blind athlete that was trying to have his last go at a, a medal before he retires. And they are, they are kind of like connected by, by this cab driver, a veteran Beijing cab driver that drives you around town. And the cab driver is important because as he drives around, you can see different neighborhoods. You can see uh, places that are not normally featured on on film, you know, outside of China. Little neighborhoods, unexpected corners. Uh, so he's a very important narrative device, linking everyone together. I think over the past year, I can see the emotions about the games and the perspective on China and Beijing change. You know, I think um, about a year, year, three months ago, I think I felt when I was in the city that there was a lot of nostalgia on what was disappearing, you know, some of the old neighborhoods and old buildings. But now by the time the games come around and we're standing right along Tianmen, you know, street, the new Tianmen street. Um, and uh, I, I think that there's a great deal more acceptance about the changes because now there's also this excitement about the new buildings, the new icons of Beijing like the, the bird's nest, Niao Chao, and the, the water cube and there's a, a new sense of pride. So it, it comes a full circle from nostalgia and regret and to, to a sense of excitement about what's new. I shot the film a year ago, so I spent most of the year here and now the games are here. On a personal level and quite superficially, I'm just here to enjoy the games and I want to hang out with the people, my friends. Uh, but I think what has been very interesting for me is actually observing the, the changes within the city, you know, and really there's a certain maturing, I think, of the Chinese people in terms of um, I've never doubted that the games will be well executed, the opening ceremony will be wonderful, but I was more curious about how they would deal with the softer aspects of things like public relations, dealing with a lot of tourists here, a lot of journalists, and I think they've done okay. They've done better than I expected. They, they've been able to, to deal with it without, without uh, falling back into certain old ways or old attitudes. Yeah. As a documentary filmmaker, I'm always curious about the moment before and the moment after. I, I feel that the moment off is actually um, not as interesting to me because that's just the games and the sports. Um, the moment, I, I've always thought that I wanted to do a short film about the first hundred days after Olympics because it's very interesting to see how everyone adjusts to the changes, especially those who have been very intensely engaged in the process. So I am on the lookout for a new story, a fresh story, uh, but I don't know what it will be because in, I think in China you, it, there's always something that's unanticipated so I'm, I'm keeping my eyes peeled for uh, something that, is, that will shed insight on the legacy of the Beijing Olympics.